Greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I just experienced that you, you just need to stay in His presence for a while longer. For those who are joining us on Facebook, I wish you could have been here, or could be here, to experience the sweetness of His presence. In this atmosphere, I want to pray for you this morning. We pray for you at home. We pray for you here in that fellowship. God, we want to declare this morning our love to you. We acknowledge that you are our other Father. That you are the God Almighty that has created this earth and the fullness thereof in order for us as your sons and your daughters to celebrate life. Thank you for this day, God, that we can acknowledge that you are the lover of our souls. Doesn't matter what we're going through, what we experience, what we see, we have the, 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 the surety that you are in control of our lives. The assurance that you are a good, good Father. Amen. Lord, we surrender everything unto you this morning. Every thought, every emotion, everything that will take us away or divert our attention from you this day. We surrender ourselves fully unto you. Lord, when we are busy with this series on dreams, vision, purpose, I pray this morning, God, even before we start the word, that you shall birth in us again the dream you have for us, for each one of us. That we shall not fear or fret for what is happening in the world. Because we know that you are our loving God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Peter. I just said I greet you the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a good day. Amen. Amen. The fact that we are alive means it's a good day. Amen. The fact that God is still on the throne is a good day. Amen. This a thought came to our mind and I spoke to PW yesterday and uh, we, we had one or two discussions, uh, not tough, one of the nice discussions. And he said something that stuck in my mind, we all know this. But it just became to me a new realization. What can do man do if God decides to bless you? What can man do if God decides to bless you? He will go beyond any law. Anything that will try to prevent you from going to what God has got in store for you. If God decides to bless you, He shall not open up just doors. He shall make way where there is no way. Amen. He shall create situations for you to be blessed. 
So even if everything seems impossible to you today, God says, I am still on the throne. God has not abdicated his kingship. He has not handed over his authority. He is still God Almighty. And I celebrate that in this morning. And I know I have I had to say this, it, it is for somebody here this morning. Amen. I know either it's you listening or it's for somebody in the house. Somebody needs to hear it today that God is still in control of your life. Doesn't matter what's happening. I'm prophesying life over your over your situation. I speak life over your family. I speak life over your finances. I speak life over your circumstances at your workplace because God is still a changer of destinies. He shall let you arise from the ashes. He says, I shall change the beauty of the ashes into beauty. You shall dream again. You shall dream again. Amen. Not nightmares. You shall dream again the dreams that God has in store for you and for me. I'm busy with the series on Dare to Dream. It is sad that so many people are, don't dream anymore. They're merely existing. Yes. They're merely getting up in the morning, getting up, go to work, go home, go to church, go to heaven. That's their pattern. There's more to life than just surviving. Yeah. There's more to life than just getting up and to go to bed. Come on. There's more to life than just meeting your budget at the end of the month. Amen. <coughs> God wants to bless you. God wants to increase favor upon your life. Amen. But we have lost our ability to dream. Why? Because life happens. Does that justify the losing of my dream? No. God, His dream for my life is still alive and well. But we have allowed storms to change our focus. Yes. We have allowed the winds of change to change our attention. Remember, we are not the buildings. We are the sons of God. He has built us, He has established us, but we are not dead beings. We are the advertisements of the glory of God here on earth. We are the ambassadors of God here on earth. In other words, when you and I speak, we are not just merely a human being speaking. We are speaking representation of heaven. So when I speak, and I speak the word of God, I am a voice of a nation. I'm not just merely a human being waiting to die. I'm busy proclaiming the kingdom of God and the authority handed over to me as an ambassador of God. We are not losers. We are overcomers. Amen. We need to believe the dream that God has placed inside of us. Yes. Amen. Shake off the blinkers from your eyes and start to believe again. Many of us are, are concerned about the day of tomorrow. How will I do this? How will I do this? As long as my God is on the throne, as long as the breath in my lungs, as long as there's life inside of me, there's hope. The fact that I am alive means I still have a purpose to fulfill. Storms might come. Storms will come. 
It will come. Storms are not there to destroy us. Storms are there to expose weaknesses, leaks in our roofs. It's interesting that you can have the most beautiful place, but the moment it rains, suddenly you say there's, there's a leak and then you start running for pots and pans. But I praise God, it's only leaking when it rains. <laughs> there's always something good to find in any situation. But God is still in control. The rain might come, the wind will blow. Everything can come against us. But as long as my God is on the throne, His purpose for my life shall remain. Amen. We hear so many people say, Oh, the devil is losing my life. Why is he losing your life? He's not he's supposed to be in your life. We give him so much credit. Sometimes, sometimes he gets more credit than he deserves. Sometimes it's just our own stupidity. Making decisions which is unwise. I have this picture in my mind. I know it's not scriptural. Please don't crucify me for this picture. But I have this picture in my mind of the devil sitting on, 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 the, on, the, on the step of the throne room of God and saying, Please, God, help your children. I am not as guilty as they charge me of. They blame me for everything. Let us realize that most of the things we go through is because of our decisions. Yes, we cannot change people's actions. We cannot change how other people are acting, but we can change on how we act. I cannot change other people's emotions, but I can change how those emotions affect me. I've been battling the past few days with my technology, my laptop. Then it hangs, then it says no, not responding, and it takes me 10, 12 minutes to open up one folder. So I said to my wife yesterday, I am now backing up everything on my computer. She said, that's good. I said, do you know why? Because I want to pick it up. <coughs> and I want to act unchristlike. I want to throw it down the, down the passage. Because it's not working in any case. And it's, and it's pulling my emotional being to the pit of hell. <laughs> and I thank God then my granddaughter came yesterday and she tried... See, she worked hard. Fix most of the issues. <coughs> but even that is not the devil's fault. Because my computer is years old. <laughs> so don't blame him for my things for not upgrading my computer. Let me continue with day to dream. And let us stick to, with the, the aspect of the computers quickly. I, you know, I am born BC, BC and T, before computers and technology. I grew up, my first workplace, we never even had a computer. We did everything manually with the hand. And then we got the computer. Where you have to type in C drive forward slash forward slash into CD-ROM, uh, 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 your C drive, in, into DOS. And it was a 286. My goodness, it was quick. With the black screen and the, and the, red, the red letters. Who can remember those days? Just raise your hand. You've just given away your age. All right. But <laughs> then, in any case, this is where we started. And eventually I got a Pentium 1 with a dot matrix printer. <laughs> it, was, it was good, but some of us are stuck there. Even spiritually, we are stuck 
with the Pentium one of 20 years, 30 years ago. <coughs> we are still serving the Lord in the same way we have served the Lord of 30 years ago. The Lord has moved on and then we blame the devil. The computer age has moved on and then we fight the system. Instead of changing the system. I never thought I would go be sharing this this morning in my sermon. But as I was thinking about it, this is so true. About our spiritual walk. The last prayer we really prayed was, Lord, please forgive me, accept me as your son. And thank you, God, for accepting me as, as your father. Oh, yeah, that was wrong. That, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, thank you, God, that I can accept you as my father. If a man cannot stumble with his tongue, he just showed you you just elevated into angelhood. Um, God, we are still stuck there in those days where we are praying the same prayers day in and day out. When we speak, when we play Christian roulette, open up the Bible and say, God, speak to me. And wherever that hand falls on the paper and verse, this is what God says this morning. Guys, it's the truth. You know, all of this is how we started. But yet we have been born again for 20 years, but we are still there. Then we wonder why our dreams seem to have died. Our dreams have not died. It's beyond our vision. Come on, I haven't got the sight. We cannot see what God is going to store for us. That does not make it less true. If we want to see what God has got in store for us, get into His presence. Seek His face. Don't, you know, I, I, I embrace the prophetic. I believe in the prophetic. But let us not prostitute prophets because we don't want to see God's face. God won't speak to us. He does not need somebody else to speak to us. But sometimes we are so deaf spiritually we cannot hear. Then the Lord shall speak to us. Through a prophet, through a dream. Through a computer that's not working. God is omnipresent and is omniscient. And he can use any way possible to speak to us. John 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Irrespective of the, the schools of thoughts today that says all roads lead to God. It is a lie from the pit of hell. There's only one way to God and that is through Jesus Christ, Him crucified according to scripture. Anybody that comes with a different Doctrine, it is not of God. You might have a dream, but I don't know who the father of your dream is. But I know the dream that I have in my heart is what God has given me. But I need to cultivate it. I need to work at my dream. I need to cherish it. I need to honor it. I need to speak to the father of my dream. I need to spend time with the architect of my life. So that I can know if I miss out something, if I am not at the place where I am supposed to be. But a dream is a journey. A dream is not an event. A destiny is not an event, but the life journey on a day to day traveling, every day traveling on my knees, every day searching the scriptures, every day doing God's will, not just once a week on a Sunday morning. It's a journey, day in, day out, in the morning, in the afternoon, late at night, early in the, the early mornings. I know some people, the Lord only speaks to you at 3 in the morning. I think that's the only time that you're awake. That your mind is clear. People are wondering how, why does God only speak to me at night? Because we are so busy during the day. Years ago, 
I've taken many mission trips into Africa, into the rest of Africa, because South Africa is also part of Africa, and the people don't think so. From South Africa into Malawi, into Zambia, Botswana, Mozambique, and Namibia, and all over in South Africa. And I've worked out the plans. I've got the map, and please, it was days before GPS. <laughs> You still have the map. You unfold it and you get the map. And you work out the route. It was before Google Maps. So this is the route. This is the destination. This is so many kilometers from here to here to here to here. And I work out everything. I work out all the places. We will drive from here and we will stop there. And the mistake I've made is to assume that the roads crossing the border of South Africa is in the same quality of the highways in South Africa. Because I've never been there before. I've studied the map. But I did not have a mentor in my life to tell me how this. Have you ever driven from the border of Zambia to Lusaka? Have you ever seen the road from Lusaka to Chipata? <laughs> Have you ever driven a road from, from Blantyre to Chiringa? No, but I've got the map. Praise God. You might have a Bible, but who's your father? Come on. We need somebody to sit you down and to coach you. Those who have been there before. And we hit the road, Jack. <laughs> We drove, it was wonderful until we have hit the border between Gazagula and Botswana and Livingston in Zambia. Then we realized, my goodness, there are elephants and buffaloes on the road, on the highway. Suddenly everything changes. You can't drive after sunset. In any case, not with the suicide mission. And as you cross the border and you're driving and you realize they don't have potholes. They have cars that are itched by, by, by holes. It is tough if you have never driven there. Trust me, it's the truth. I've got pictures to show you. And then I realize you cannot travel two kilometers per minute. This is how you actually work out in South Africa. You take the distance divided by two, that is the time frame. Not if you are crossing the borders. Then you realize 50 kilometers can take you a few hours. Yeah. I arrived in uh, Blantyre, Malawi. 13 hours after my expected time. I've never been out more than 12, 15 minutes on any journey. Here I'm arriving. Now I must meet the pastor in the middle of the night. In Blanta, I don't even know how he looks. <laughs> now I must find him 12 o'clock at night. Just think with me, I'm busy here laying the foundation of the importance of, of a map and a dream and, a, and, and a, a mentor in your life. Eventually said, God, please show this man to me. We didn't have cell phones. Our young people don't know what it is to live a life without a cell phone, a GPS and computers. If you want to phone somebody, you must go to a ticket box. And hope it works. <laughs> Eventually, here's this man in the middle of the road. I nearly drove over him. And here's my friend. He said, Do you want to continue now? Because we are only 80 kilometers away from here. Actually, 80 kilometers. I've been driving now non stop for 30 hours. I'm tired. 80 kilometers, I can do it 40 minutes. I have not learned my lesson. He says, are you sure? 
thousand years old shoe. So we went to bed, found a place to sleep, went to bed. The next morning, that Sunday morning, I'm preaching that Sunday morning. And I'm driving the next morning, early, early I'm driving. The first 40 kilometers was nice. Highway, a tar road, and then we hit the gravel road. The next 40 kilometers, really is the truth, took us eight hours. Eight hours to do 40 kilometers. Driving so crazy on the highway, you get out, you walk past the car. A guy on his bicycle, overtaking us, his jacket is, is flapping in the wind as he's driving home. And as they're still driving, he comes back after us in the night's rest, and still we are driving and he's coming back already. <laughs> I had my map. Root worked out. I have my Bible. But yet I do not understand the word. The fact that you can read doesn't mean you can understand. I couldn't even phone a friend. There's no reception, even the had a cell phone. <laughs> and eventually, after a week, now I know the whole week, I must travel this road again to go back home. And I was, was not looking forward to this road. Some places we had to stop, pick up bricks and stones and to fill up ditches so they can continue. And we did, we had the wrong car, we had the Mercedes Benz Sprinter. It is so low. This is a song that says, buy a deep holly mate. So he picked us up out of this road and it was tough. And the morning of our departure, he says, Pastor, I want to show you another road. Oh. He says, it, it, it's good. But I've realized good is different from different people's perspective. And he took us back to Blantyre. A whole 40 minutes later. I said, but what? Why 8 hours and 40 minutes? He says, but um, this one has got more dirt road. I said, but it took us 40 minutes. I could have been there a week ago within 40 minutes, not 8 hours. So the fact that we have a plan does not necessarily mean it's God's plan for my life. The fact that we have a dream worked out, this is what I want to do in five years from now. This is my destiny. This is what I want to do. I want to go to America. I want to do this, that and the other. Is that the plan that God has got in store for your life? Is that the dream that was birthed in the heart for you and for me? I never planned to become a pastor. Really. Look what I'm doing today. I did everything else than equipping myself for what I'm supposed to do. But as we are driving this journey with God, you can make your own plans. But it shall take you back. He shall take you back. He shall, he shall take you back. Not in the way we, we, we would love it to be done. <coughs> and as we are going with our dream, with the Lord placed in our hearts, He says, Psalm 139 says, The plan that I have for you, the dream that I have for you, is like the sand yes, of the sea. You cannot count the magnitude of what God has got in store for us because our brain capacity is limited to what God has got in store for us. Me. It's like me trying to explain to Karindi. 
the issues of life, discuss existential questions to her. And she will look at me and say, oh, are, are you serious? Because she's not ready to comprehend the magnitude of what God has got in store for her life. But that does not say that the plans are not there. The plans are there. We might not understand it. Because God is revealing His plans to us like peeling an onion. Layer by layer. So that we don't have to cry too much as He peels it off. Because if you have peeled onions, you know you'll start to cry. Willingly and unwillingly. But it, at the end, it will taste good. If we are faithful what God is busy doing with us, it will be good to your soul. I'm speaking to somebody here. I'm speaking to somebody. And on this journey, you must learn to honor the road ordinances, the road signs, or the lack thereof. We have driven many places on our outreaches. There's no road signs. There are roads, but no road signs. No board that says, keep me left. And then you turn around because it's left. <laughs> so we are missing things. Okay, you missed that one as well. But in any case, so what do I do? I take a piece of paper, write down, I draw a little line. 121.4 kilometers turn left. Then you make a little left and you turn it and you continue. You drive, you, you write your own map as you are driving. That's one way of developing your walk with God. By yourself, on yourself, trial and error. But it's so much easier if you have somebody in your life that can set you down and say, this is the way. Amen. Can you imagine that I, I would have been tired the first day coming to Malawi for the first time, if I have been taken on this shorter route. But the shorter route had more gravel road than tar road. Sometimes we want a smooth journey. But the smooth journey does not necessarily take you to the right direction. Let us not fight the journey. Let us embrace the destiny. Let us have the end in mind and not battling with the current situation. No. We are sitting globally with the pandemic. We can choose to believe all the negative things or we can choose to believe that God is still in control of your life and my life. No. That my future is secure in Him. We can be concerned about our finances. But I'm going to tell you, God is the provider of all. And if in, in, in everything. How must I do this journey with God? Read your Bible. Pray every day. Amen. You're always laughing at me when I quote this, this Sunday school song. Read your Bible, pray every day. And it shall grow, grow and grow. It's a simple song, but yet we are still falling short in abiding and obeying these basic foundations. Yeah. Understand your plan. Understand your purpose. Once you understand your purpose, you are in competition with nobody. And nobody can take your place because God's plan is designed for your life and for nobody else's life. And nowhere else's plan is, de is designed so you can accommodate your in that destiny. No, that sounds wrong. I cannot try to copy somebody else's destiny for my life. Yes, we will work together as one. We must work together helping each other achieve destinies. We are not born to this place, to this earth. Just for ourselves. But my challenge this morning, and I'm nearly done. My challenge this morning. Do you know your dream? 
Do you embrace your dream? Do you sit with somebody that believes in your dream? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's important. I had a pastor sitting with us a few years ago, quite a few years ago. He said, Pastor, you have been to, to Zambia before. I said, yes. He said, I want to take a trip to, to the Copper Belt up north in Zambia, in Kitwe and in Dola. I said, I can, I can help you with the road and give you some contacts and people to, to see and to speak to. Because we've been there quite a few times. So, but what car are you driving? You know, I'll drive BMW X1. I the, the, the small 110, 120, the small, mm. small BMW. So that car would work. Mm. So, you know, this is a very reliable car. Is it the road or not? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that car is designed or fit for this road. But anyway, he decided to go against what my suggestions were. Because how will this old pastor know? Forget it. I have been there before. He has never been there before. And he left a particular morning. The second day, I received a phone call. From an unknown number. A foreign number. It's not like the coffee ad. I like we talk foreign, but a foreign number. And this guy phones me from Lusaka. I said, Pastor, please, you must help me. I said, what's wrong? He said, my car's um, wishbone. It's totally broken. I hit a pothole in the road. There's nothing I can do for you. Was just found a boat rock. It cost him a fortune and a half to get the car back to South Africa. All of this could have been prevented if he listened. So this morning, if we submit, listen, follow directions from God and those who He has appointed over our lives, we can save a lot of time effort and heartache. Let us not grow old missing our destiny. Let us not grow old and say one day I've missed purpose in life. So my challenge this morning is if you are sitting here and say you know what pastor life has happened. I've prayed last week already for those who are said I don't have a dream. But this morning, I want to pray for every one of us, for those who are tuned in, those who are listening on Facebook, for those in the house. I want to pray for you that says, please help me. Life has happened in my life. Can we pray? Just close your eyes for a moment. While your eyes closed, is there anybody here that says, please pray for me? My dream is not alive anymore. I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for those that have told me, I want to pray for you as well. Father, I come to you this morning. I know I've delivered this message. As you've asked me to do it might have been delivered in a more light-hearted way but it doesn't diminish the importance of the message there are so many that says this morning please pray for me my dream has died my dream has been stolen or I missed my dream because of life and the circumstances of life. Father, I want to pray for everyone this morning. Help them to rediscover your plans and your purpose for them in their lives this morning, God. Help them to 
seek out a mentor, a spiritual father who can guide them. Thank you, Father. If we celebrate you, Lord God, not even Lochi shall stop us to celebrate you. In Jesus' name, amen.